אבונד בשמעיה, יתקדש מך, תתי מלכותך, תהר אותך, אחמד בשמעיה, כן אף בהרעה, חמנד מהרעה, הבלן יומדן ומכרע, בקלן חבין, כמד אף שבקלן לך אבין, ואל תעילן לניסיונה, לעצלן מן בישה. All right, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Ephraim, Shabbat Shalom. If you're listening to my voice, that means you are blessed to see another Shabbat. And for that, all praise, honor, and glory is due to the Most High God of Israel for now and forever. All right, welcome to all my subscribers, my new subscribers. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And hit the notification bell and select all so you'll be notified every time I upload a new presentation. And again, uh, I would check back every day on the channel and not rely totally on YouTube to send the notification that I've uploaded stuff because I, I've heard that they, they don't always get, uh, my subscribers don't always get the notifications when I um, you know, upload something. So, you know, just come every day because, I mean, I got a couple I put up every day. You know, just come to the channel on your own. And let's not depend totally on YouTube for that. But I appreciate everybody um, who's been, uh, you know, taking active part in the channel and liking the videos and commenting because all that helps in the viewership. Um, and for those of you who don't know or who's new to the channel, um, the prayer that I played at the beginning of this Shabbat was um, that's the All Father's Prayers in Hebrew, Aramaic. That's the language that um, in the tongue that Yeshua or who you may know as Jesus, that's the tongue he spoke, spoke in. So I thought it was fitting and, um, you know, that I, I start the Shabbat off with um, the Hebrew Aramaic prayer, the Our, Our Father prayers. All right. Um, now, this lesson on this Shabbat, you know, I'm dealing with, um, you know, I mean, I'm talking to everyone, but specifically to the, 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 the children of Israel and all of those who stand and sojourn with the children of Israel. OK, um, the Torah. And for, for, for many of you who don't who do not know or realize the Torah is basically. Um, the Holy Bible, the first five books of the Holy Bible. That's what that's what's called the Torah. I actually had some um, subscribers of mine thinking the Torah was some like different kind of book or whatever. But, you know, and there's no shame in not knowing, you know, it's all good. But the Torah is the five, the first five books of Moses in the Tanakh is the second 24 uh, books. That's called the Tanakh. And then, of course, you know, you have um, the New Testament. Now, the reason why I'm doing this lesson is because I've, you know, I, I see and I read stuff here and there. And, you know, it's dawned on me that um, many of you uh, Israelites, you're, you're still kind of holding on to some of the Christian theology or the Christian doctrine that, you know, you were taught, you know, ad nauseum, you know, when you were young or coming up, whatever the case may be. And the, and the, the reality is we're not supposed to mix the doctrine. The New Testament, there, there is really no New Testament. And I'm not really getting into that, but. You know, um, the reason why many Israelites uh, reject the New Testament is because we already have our laws. Our laws and statutes and commandments that God gave to the children of Israel are located in the five books of Moses. That said, Yeshua, Jesus came and said he came not to abolish no law or make no new laws. He came to fulfill the laws. So, you know, um, we don't we don't adhere to any kind of law or testament you know in the in the new testament we just don't now do i accept the new testament yes because i accept yeshua i accept jesus i accept that he was here and you know but Ye yeshua did not come to save anybody he came he's not a messiah okay um and from the standpoint that he ca he said he came for the for the the sheep or the law um the lost sheep of the house of israel right he came to gather them back up because you know they were you know scattered or whatever um, he already told us salvation is of the Jews, right? So that means you have to take up the laws, statutes, and commandments given to the children of Israel. And he, he, he reiterated that, you know, time and time again, but they've attributed things to him in the New Testament that he would not say, that he would never say. And I know he wouldn't because anything that contradicts the Most High's word, you can automatically reject, period, point blank. And it's in the Torah. Go back to Torah. I've been telling you all this from day one. If anything in the New Testament contradicts Torah, reject it immediately, period. You know, Timothy wasn't Timothy was not an Israelite. Um, neither was Titus. Um, matter of fact, Timothy was part Greek, uh, part Hebrew, but he was not an Israelite. He was not a he was not a child of of Jacob. So he can't tell us anything about our genealogy or anything like that. You know, he's a non-Israelite. So, 
you know, I mean, that's just what it is. But I want y'all to understand that, you know, we can't mix the two um, doctrines. OK, um, our our laws, statutes and commandments are in the Torah, period, point blank. I mean, truthfully, you don't, you don't have to go beyond that. But I mean, I know that we do. You know, there's some things in there, you know, and, and, and the reason why a lot of those things in the New Testament sounds familiar is because, you know, a lot of it came from the Torah, believe it or not. You know, they, they kind of lifted up, lifted our stuff from the Torah and put it in the in the New Testament. And, um, you know, some of it was like, I think was written, you know, just kind of someone being creative. I, I mean, you know, you know, there's some good stuff in there, though, but there's other, there's some other stuff in there, too. But I'm not getting into that. But I'm speaking to the children of Israel today on this Shabbat. OK, um, you need to get back to the Torah. OK, you know, our, our ancestors were Torah keepers. OK, the first five books of Moses, that's where you need to really concentrate your studies on. OK, and that's what this lesson um, is dealing with. All right. I, I know you, you know, like me, you know, I was raised Christian, too. You know, I accept I accept Yeshua. I accept Jesus, but not like Jesus is not God. There's nothing God God like about him. He was, you know, he was he's the son of God, but he's not God and he's not God like you know, many of you kind of speak about him in that way. And he's just he's just not, you know, he's you know, and this is no disrespect to him at all. But I know who he is. And more importantly, I know who he isn't. And he said out of his own mouth, you know, the father, which is the most high God, is greater than I. And I'm going to leave on that note. So let's go and get on with the lesson. And, um, you know, I'll check you guys later on. So enjoy this lesson and uh, have a peaceful, uh, restful Shabbat. And it's Dr. E from signing off saying Shalom Elect. Uh, Shabbat Shalom. And uh, before I um, start the lesson real quick, um, Jesus gave context to the statement he made. He said, I am not sent, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And, you know, you don't you don't hear people really speak on this or even teach on this. But the, the context for him saying that is he told us a house divided cannot stand. OK, and I, had, I just wanted to say that real quick. So that's why his his mission was to gather the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I mean, all of us. And that includes Dan. OK, Dan is included in that, too. He did not say I've come with, um, for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, except <laughs> except Dan. You know, he didn't exclude anyone, all the tribes of Israel, man. And when it's all said and done, we will be together. We will be one. Believe that. The Torah is our, our, our foundation. And this is not to take away from the Tanakh, um, but in, in Torah or what they call the uh, the five books of Moses, you know, um, that's the that basically that is that's that's our foundation, because in those five books are all the laws, statutes and commandments required of us per our covenant with the Most High God of Israel. Um, in the Torah, the Most High speaks in first person. And let me let me say this so that I'm clear, okay? When I tell you, when I say that this is the Most High talking, this is the Most High in first person, that means that those words are coming directly from God, okay? There's no nothing after that. He said what he said. He means what he said, and that's that. There's no questioning that. There's no nothing. Just so I'm clear. So that's why I always I always reiterate or iterate that this is the most high talking in first person, meaning the words that I'm I'm quoting or reading to you verbatim came directly from him. And nothing else needs to be said. But I think I need to, to I needed to, to kind of say that because I think some of you really could get confused um between uh you know, things that the, the Most High said, advice, uh, things that someone said that he said, or whatever the case may be. Um, you know, when when he's speaking first person, there's no second, third hand. He's I, I'm, I'm he's telling you directly and specifically what it is that you know he wants us to know, wants us to do, or whatever the case may be. All right. Now, there's no real um, the 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 the. If you really if you if you research the Torah and the Tanakh, what you will probably see is that the Torah is the five books of Moses, all Hebrew. OK, all Hebrew. All right. And what you will find with the Tanakh is that it's mostly Hebrew, some Greek. Now, 
you would think that that means or probably means that 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 well, well first of all the question would be well why why would some of the Tanakh be in uh, in Greek right that would be one of the first questions right and rightfully so because um, they have their hands all over the so-called New Testament they do um, so do the Romans another story for another day but um, my personal what I believe, what I think is that, uh, like many of our laws, statutes, and commandments, I believe that the, 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 the Tanakh, some of the books in the Tanakh were translated into Greek. And somehow it got crossed up that, that some, of the, some of the books in the Tanakh were written in Greek. Uh, that's a major difference, written in Greek or written by, or translated by Greeks. That's a, that's a whole different thing. But I think, uh, but I think that's important to note because, and this is this is, and for me, you know, and I and I and I'm, I, I humbly, am thankful that I'm able to discern, uh, what 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 is of the Most High and what is not, what is of Yeshua Hamashiach and what is not by grace and mercy of the Most High. That's one of the spirits that I operate in. You can't lie to me. You can't tell me what the Most High said something or Yeshua Hamashiach Shiach said something. Because because my gifts will let me know that that's not true. Now, everyone does not operate in that gift. I get it. We all have different measures of different gifts. Mine is being able to discern the word of Yah. And I'm humbled by that. So I'm not too concerned about anything in, in, in the so-called New Testament or, uh, or, or definitely you know, the, the Tanakh and, and most certainly not the Torah. Um, because of what the Most High has equipped me with right so and this is why he appoints pastors this is why he appoints teachers like he appoints people to lead you know his people because everyone and anyone can pick up a book and read from it anyone can do that right but that doesn't mean that you you, you were ordained to do so that doesn't mean that you were that the most high equipped you with the knowledge wisdom or understanding to do so or the gift and abilities to discern what is of the most high and what is not. Because there's a lot, let me tell you something, y'all know as well as I do, there's a lot out there that's not of God. There's a lot out there that, that where, where people lied on Yeshua HaMashiach, who the world knows as Jesus Christ. Uh, to this day, it's got people messed up because they said that Christ said it. And Christ ain't said it no more than the man in the moon. But because they said he said it, right? They're, they're, you know, there are people today that condemn Christ for something that man did you know Christ never claimed himself to be God Christ would never say anything like that Christ knows better okay he is the son of the most high but I'm not, I'm not I don't want to veer off and go on a tangent but I'm just saying to making my point that men unscrupulous men lie God is not a man that he should lie okay and I'm so humble that I know the word of Yah of the most high I know it I know the word of Christ you know when he came to me in that in that dream in that vision and I heard his voice you know was, <laughs> his voice was like no ever I'd ever heard I mean like I, I've never heard that voice before or after when Yeshua HaMashiach came to me so um, I think it's important to, to, to kind of do this lesson to let you know uh, you know about the books of the, the children of Israel and why the Torah the, the five books of Moses is our foundation okay the Tanakh too but more so the Torah I stress that okay so that being said let's kind of get into um, get into the lesson and kind of talk a little bit about the, the, the distinction between the two the Torah and the Tanakh let's get it okay um one of the first things I really want to get across before we, you know, you know, delve deep into this, uh, into the Torah and Tanakh lesson, um, and I did, I did a lesson a while back, or I touched on it at least, um, when I when I talked about how the thing to understand with 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 the Torah, especially because it's in Hebrew, um, that was translated. By so many different languages, like when the Torah was translated to English, right? I want you all to know and understand that there are certain words that didn't exist 
because he, Hebrew is a very, uh, for lack of a better term, it's a very weird kind of language, like, right? There are certain words that couldn't be translated over, right? And I, I touched on that, and that, that's called, um, it's called uh, uh, sonne, right? So they have to put the next best thing that they could find to match what that word was in Hebrew, right? And that went on, that goes on quite a bit in the Torah and the Tanakh, it does, because certain words just are not tr translatable. And and I'm going to tell you, sometimes one word can change the whole meaning of something. One word. Right? It's something to really think about. And case in point, I believe it's the book of um, Proverbs, if I'm not mistaken. Proverbs or Psalms. I can't remember which one exactly. But the original version goes, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Now, what is, now that's, that's as plain as day. Basically, what it's saying is that when people of God are in positions of power, then the people that are under them or who, who they have control of, whatever, they're, 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 they're happy. They're in a good place. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Now, for some reason, in one of the newer versions of the Bible, I don't know if it's the NIV or the, you know, the NKG, but that same scripture and verse said it was changed. But one word says, when the righteous are in authority, the people thrive. So you don't have to be a, 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 a literary scholar to know that rejoice and thrive are two totally different words. I don't even know how and why they came up with thrive for, to replace rejoice because Thrive totally changes the meaning of that scripture and verse. When a righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. They're happy, right? They're ecstatic. But the new version says when a righteous are in authority, the people thrive. It's almost as if whoever rewrote that wanted to make it seem like that verse, scripture and verse was more so about leadership, you know, and less about the people, right? Meaning that basically... If, if if whoever's in authority to the people they're gonna you know they're gonna be okay because they're gonna strive and this and that no that's not what the original scripture and verse said so and i said that to, to to make my point that one word can change the whole meaning of, of of a whole passage one word just one word and i use that as my example all the time right so i want you all to understand that you know especially moving forward as i, as, as I continue to do some of these lessons and in some of these uh, these uh, these Shabbat services, you know, I may have to to, to break out with the concordance because I use an exhaustive uh, concordance, you know, because um, I do in depth studying. If I come up on a scripture and verse that I need to I, you know, I need to see what the original um, scripture and verse said, like in Hebrew, and get to get to get a breakdown of that, then I'll do that. Right now, I don't expect everyone to do that. I mean, because you know that's some, that's some extra stuff. Everyone's not going to do that. And I get it. But that's why I do what I do and why I am who I am, right? Because it's important. I don't mind doing that, you know, because I need to get out to you guys, you know, what it is and what it isn't. So that little extra that, that's that's nothing. But um, just, just know that moving forward before we get to the next segment that there are some words in Hebrew that just couldn't and cannot be translated over to quote unquote English. And as such, when a word or words is put in its place, it can change the whole meaning of something to where it don't even make sense. <laughs> All right. So let's just keep that under your hat moving forward. Let's get it. OK, so again, when when you think Torah, you know, for the children of Israel, you think automatically the five books of Moses. OK, given to the most high. Um, includes uh, Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy. All right, that is our foundation, and it begins from the creation of the world. Right, the beginnings of uh, the children of Israel and our descendants, and Egypt, and includes giving the, the the Torah to Moses, 
and ends just over last crossing through the promised land with the death of Moses. Now while the Midrash believed that the Torah was created before the creation of the world, whereby the Most High used it as the blueprint for his creation, the majority believed that the Torah was as a result of the Babylonian captivity, which I reject that outright. All right? Because that's why the Gen by Gen Genesis starts with in the beginning. Now, without getting too far off or varying too far left, I mentioned this before. Um, I believe Genesis to be the works of mostly Enoch, but it's not credited to him because they, they decided not to include any of Enoch's works into the, uh, the Torah. And I think that was a gross uh, misjustice. I did, that's why I did a video on, on Enoch. So you guys check that out if you haven't. Um, so they, they just attributed, you know, Genesis to Moses, although Moses was nowhere near the beginning, you know, that's, you know, but he was chosen uh, to lead us out of our bondage in Egypt, you know, the whole nine, the most I chose him. You know, we all know the story. Moses didn't want to be chosen. He said, well, I, I, I don't speak well. I stutter, you know, you know, you know, pick Aaron, you know, and most I wasn't trying to hear none of that. He was like, nah, you my chosen vessel. You know, Aaron could talk for you if that's the case, but nah, it's you, brother. It's you. <laughs> and that's the beautiful thing about being chosen. You know, you can't petition the most high to choose you. You know, he has mercy on whom he will have mercy. He chooses whom he chooses. And I mean the whole nine. You know, that that that's 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 what happens when you're a sovereign being, when you're totally omnipotent and you have to you don't have to, to uh you don't depend on anything or anyone, nor do you have to consult with anyone for any decisions you make. That's just it. I mean, his law, his word is final. So when you think Torah, that's 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 it. In a nutshell, think creation, you know, the beginning, right? Adam, Eve, the whole nine. Right? Now the Tanakh. Which with with that and the Torah both combined, they can they call it the quote unquote Old Testament, which kind of gives a false credence that since it's quote unquote Old Testament that it's outdated, or or the New New Testament Christians think it doesn't apply to them. Well, uh, one of the two is true. Um, it really doesn't apply to them per se. Um, it, it it applies to the children of Israel. <laughs> okay, however. Christ Yeshua HaMashiach said um, that salvation is of the Jews. Once again, for a lot of you Christian brothers and sisters and some of you Israelites, Christ himself said salvation is of the Jews. And I think that's John 4.22. Okay. So Christ did not come to do away with any laws. There's no, there's no New Testament. Not really. Okay. That the, 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 the gospels of Christ along with a lot of uh, some of our stolen uh, laws, statutes, and commandments out of Torah and Tanakh were included in this so-called New Testament. It was repackaged as a New Testament. A lot of that stuff, some of that stuff is in Tanakh, you know, few is in Torah, you know, but, but, but those, those, those scriptures and verses are kind of, you know, they were borrowed or stolen from our books. So, you know, the New Testament Christians thinking that, that, that uh, the, the quote unquote Old Testament doesn't apply, apply to them in a sense, they're right, but but in another sense, they're wrong because in order to, to, to be saved, to receive salvation, you have to take on the laws, statutes, and commandments given to the children of Israel found where? In the Torah and Tanakh. Okay, y'all follow me? So, you know, it's kind of, they, you know, mix, mix, mixing some truth with some falsehood, right? Um, so, that's really the... Uh, the distinction, if you will, um, there's really no Old Testament. The Torah and Tanakh is the, the, the law, statutes, and commandments of the children of Israel. Period. All right. Torah refers to the to five books. Um, the Tanakh refers to the twenty-four, which includes a collection of you know writings and um, you know knowledge, you know wisdom. There's a, there's a lot of you know great stuff in the Tanakh as well as the Torah. You know, and those two are are that's that's. Uh, that's our foundation for the children of Israel. Okay, so I just wanted—I felt I just wanted to to kind of say that, you know, because I, I I really do believe that some people had it had it kind of had it a little confused, and uh, and hopefully this will this will you know you know unconfuse you if you will, 
Um, that's why I tell you all the time, my people, you can't mix, um, you can't mix, you know, Christian dogma with, with, um, with the law, statutes, and commandments given to the children of Israel. It does not work. It, it will not work. Okay, we have to be that beacon of light. In order to be that beacon of light, we have to know what it is we have to do so that we can offer salvation to our sojourners and our brothers and sisters that want to stand with us. Okay, you can't lead anyone if you don't know where you're going. Because what did Christ say? It's the blind leading the blind. And you're going to lead them right into a ditch. And we can't have that. All right. So anyway, um, I just wanted to do this. Like I said, a quick little lesson today on this Shabbat. Um, I, I normally don't give lessons on Shabbats other than the service, but I felt I just I just felt led to to do this one. Um, so again, hopefully um, uh, some of you understand a little better between um, between the two and how it, and how it relates to the so-called New Testament. Even um, the Torah and Tanakh is ours, i.e., the children of Israel. Okay, some of what's in the Tanakh and the Torah made its way over to the new testament that's why some of the stuff sounds similar well it should because it came right directly from our from our books in the torah and tanakh you know but what do i tell you all as a rule of thumb okay if you read anything in new testament if you read anything in 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 a tanakh i mean if you read anything that does not line up with the word of the most high you don't even have to think about it you can just reject it outright and that's why that's why I keep harping please let let the let the Torah be your foundation always go back always revert back to Torah we are Torah keepers okay we're led by Torah okay if someone says something to me if I read something in the New Testament or whatever and I go to Torah and I can't find a precept for it or I can't find where thus said the Lord you know and and and, and for whatever reason my discernment isn't operating and I can't discern what's what if it's not in Torah, I'm I'm sorry, not sorry, but I'm 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 you know I'm rejecting it, period, point blank. You know, to, you know, to God be the glory. You know, uh, may the Most High have mercy if I'm wrong, but you know, um, He's been pretty good at leading me. You know, in terms of my discernment to know you know what's of Him and what's not. So, um, yeah, I mean, let that let that be your foundation, my brothers and sisters, the Torah. Okay, that's that's it for us. All right. So on that note, I'm going to go ahead and end this lesson. I'm saying a higher by Yeshim. Yeshua HaMashiach, Puruka Toa Adonai, for now and forever. You know, Shalom, Elect, love you guys. Till next time, it's Dr. Ephraim signing off.